Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 500 has arrived. This is the new version of the Raspberry Pi 400. So that used the Raspberry Pi 4. This uses a Raspberry Pi 5 processor. Uh, the motherboard is gonna be different inside. What I really liked about the Pi 400 was it was completely silent. So it had a sheet of aluminum going all the way across, which dissipated the heat from the CPU in the middle. And we'll see what this is like in a minute because I'm gonna do a tear down. Uh, this is the eight gig of RAM model and it's all in white. So from the back of the box here, puts the power of a Raspberry Pi 5 into a high quality compact keyboard with all the performance and speed you need. It's an ideal home computer. And so same processor and RAM as the Raspberry Pi 5, the DDR4X, two HDMI outputs, uh, two USB 3 and two USB 2 sounds strange. Yeah, when you look at the back, we've got one USB 2 and two USB 3. Uh, and we've got USB-C on the back here, so that possibly could be another USB 2 socket using the on-the-go standard. And there's the HDMI, so micro still. Would have been nice if they were full size on such a big board. Uh, we've also got the GPIO pins which are covered up by a rubber cover here and the Ethernet socket. And a Kensington lock to lock it in place. I see no mention of PCIe or NVMe on here. Let's see if I can get it open without using a tool. Now the old Pi 400, yeah, just had little clips. So no screws or anything like that. We go all the way around. Yeah, that's coming apart. Right, so very similar to before. We've got the ribbon cable here for the keyboard. And that's just simple with a QR code. So this bit here is just the LED lights. So they sit onto the LED lights on the board. And we've got an M.2 slot. So this is all pre-release, but on the box, there's no mention of M.2 or PCI or anything like that. But there definitely is the space for it. But there's nothing here. And underneath the Pi 400, there was just some thermal pads. So let's pull this off. I guess it's just a thermal pad, the old one was. I don't think there's any other screws or anything. Don't know why this bit doesn't come up. Because that's pulling, that's quite a bit of pressure on there. Unless I go this way. Aha. So, one thermal pad, that takes all of the heat out of the processor, and as I say, it works so well in the Raspberry Pi 400. So what's going on here? So basically the space is there, but there is no connection. But there is, there's provision to be able to put it on the board, and as before, this bit clips out. So one, two, I haven't even switched this on yet. So that is, uh, and it's mine came with an SD card in it. That is the Raspberry Pi 500. So Raspberry Pi 500 revision four PVT. And there's the slot. Anyone got any soldering skills? So it's several days later and I've had a response from the closed Raspberry Pi forum. So this is just for people who test Raspberry Pi products early. And the response was, Pi 500 does not have NVMe. Uh, that's not to say that a Pi 500 Plus might not in the future, uh, but I guess this is all to do with money. If they're selling this board with the SD card, which it looks like it will come with from the brief, um, but obviously check out you know, what the official listings are, which will be up to date on the official Raspberry Pi site. I'll put links in the description. But if you're going to add the cost of an NVMe drive and also the slot, it's going to hit the bottom line. And Raspberry Pi 500 has always been there as a low cost computer. There's no denying that NVMe makes an operating system run much, much faster, much nicer to use. Obviously, we've got bigger sizes possible with NVMe drives. Maybe that will be something in the future. So the Pi 500 wasn't the only thing released today. We also had this 15.6 inch monitor. Now I've already had this out of the box. It comes better packaged than this. But this is really well made. 
and feels really solid, feels really durable. So it's in the same Raspberry Pi plastic, has this really nice kickstand which is poseable. And it also comes with a USB-C cable because there's a really interesting way that this is powered. One of the suggestions is to power it from the Pi. So this is the official power adapter going into USB-C. But then I've got USB-A going out and into the back of this monitor. And you can see I've got a, a micro HDMI cable going into the HDMI socket on here as well. And so that's being powered by one plug. But you don't get as much brightness in this mode. Although looking at the display, it looks perfectly bright to me. And I've got spotlights on here and uh, it's still coping perfectly. And obviously if you have it central, there's space for the cables to go underneath the monitor, which is quite nice. You've got this sort of bridge here. And you can see there's cutouts for speakers. So we'll test that in a minute. But before I do that, I'm actually going to shut it down and plug in one of these energy plugs so I can see how much power it's using. So if I switch the plug on, I think the Pi will boot up on its own. Yeah, Raspberry Pi logo. Comes up with the resolution 60 Hertz, 1920 by 1080. So let's play a video. Volume is full on here, but there is also volume controls and brightness controls here. There's, there's a power button here and then volume and brightness. So let's see. So that's volume 50% and it did say that was the restriction when you were powering it from the Pi. And then brightness goes to 60%. Sounds very much like a laptop. Uh, nothing to write home about, but it's nice to have the option of sound. But rather nicely, it does add a 3.5mm jack on the back. So if I plug that in... So this is something we don't have on a Raspberry Pi 5. Excuse me. So it must have a converter to be able to take the HDMI signal and strip the audio to give it out as a 3.5mm, which I like that. Let's go back to the beginning of this video and see how much power it's using when it's running on YouTube with full volume. Let's put that back up again, or full volume in this configuration. So it's 480 at the moment, so 1080 will draw a bit more power. So full screen 1080 with a volume of 50%, and we're currently using 10 watts of power. Very impressive. But if I plug the power into the monitor separately, Let's see that, how that changes. So I'm going to have to shut it down to do that. So this cube is plugged into my power monitor so I can test all the power that's going into this extension lead. And I've got the Raspberry Pi 500 being powered by the official power supply and this is powering the monitor. And it doesn't look any brighter at the moment but I guess we have the option to be able to go high. Yeah, so you can see the volume has the option to go all the way up to 100% and brightness goes all the way up to 100. Yeah, that is pretty bright. It looks especially good with the sun in the background. So let's play that same YouTube video again and see how much power it's using in this configuration. Full brightness, I'll change the volume in a minute because I don't, know, I don't go to full volume before testing it. it does something weird, it, uh, it goes back on itself. Maybe you have to do it more gradually. So we go to full volume. There you go, so that's full volume and full brightness. And we're using 11 watts of power. So still very low, and yeah, in this quite bright environment, that does look really nice. Let's put some speech on. So if I go back to my channel and just pick something where I'm talking, this will do. Okay, so I thought I'd do a video on Raspberry yeah, that's clear enough. Definitely like the fact that we've got that headphone output. And if I take out the SD card, so there's nothing in there at the moment, and press and hold the power. So it boots into the network boot, which is enabled by default. So basically, if you don't have an operating system on your Pi, you can boot and it will install the Raspberry Pi Imager software into RAM and then download the operating system and write it to your SD card. So that's nice to see that from day one is enabled. Here it's working with my Raspberry Pi 5. 
So obviously I've had to use a separate mouse and keyboard for this, but uh, it's also being powered by the Raspberry Pi 5, same as it was being by the 500 just now. Just starting it up with the Raspberry Pi 4 now as well. Again, that's booted up absolutely fine. And I've even got the TV hat on here uh, from a previous video, so extra power, but that's still working. But we are going to find that some Raspberry Pis won't be able to supply enough power to it. So from the instructions it says the power is 1.5 amps at 5 volt and the Pi 4 can handle a maximum of 1.2 amps across all four USB ports. The other alternative would be to use the GPIO pins to power the display as it's only using it to power it. So what about if I tried to power it with GPIO pins from a, a different Pi? Ah, here we go. So what's this? That's, US, that's micro USB. So, micro USB to USB C can go on there, and then that just needs to fit on the GPIO pins. Okay, so these will fit on the GPIO pins. I just need to get them connected with these. Let's go with a black one. All right, let's go with green. Let's keep it the same color. So here's my cable, USB-C to micro USB. Uh, this is an old micro USB cable I cut apart. Uh, and then I've got power going through this block connector. And then I've got a male to male and then a female to female connector. So I can put this on the GPIO pins. So for a Pi 3B Plus, I'm gonna need a USB-C to micro adapter for the power. Uh, different HDMI, cause this has got a full size HDMI socket. So let's try it from the USB first, switch on. So it wakes the monitor, comes up with a power X and HDMI X. Power X again. Did give me a resolution for a second. Oh no, it is booting up. Okay, so I thought Pi 3B Plus is also working. Uh, let's just check that it is actually working. Yeah, that seems to be working all right. So what have I got on here? This is my TV hat memory card. So I'll have some videos on here. If we start playing one of these. Don't know how well this will play on the 3B Plus. Yeah, so that's working and that's using the USB to power the monitor. I don't need this cable yet. So maybe I try a 02W. So if I close this down and I've got a 02W in here, don't need this extra board, that turns it into a, a Pi 4B or so they say, and it gives you the micro HDMIs and so on. But we don't need that for the purpose of this. Let's see if it boots up on its own. The green lights come on, Raspberry Pi. So this is power going into the Pi 02W and then the GPIO pins uh, on the five volt pin going out into that USB-C plug. And that's starting up now with Raspberry Pi OS. And I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard because it didn't seem to like other USB devices being plugged in. It was, it was drawing too much power from it. I guess the limitation is micro USB. That's why they went USB-C because it supplies a lot more power. So you can see that's booted up and it actually doesn't feel that slow. Oh, it needs a few seconds to see my Bluetooth keyboard. So you can see it's not there at the moment. If I press a button and jiggle it about. Yeah, there you go. So Bluetooth keyboard's on now. So if I click on here, you can see that it's running the programs. So if I open up that video folder, uh, and just play one of the videos on here. So we'll play this nothing to declare one and see how well that runs on a Pi 02W. Powering the screen, I'm really impressed with this. I need to check how much power this is using in a second, but you can see that's playing and I can leave that going. And it's all working. So playing this video, how much power are we using? So it currently says it's using six watts of power. Now that's pretty impressive to play a video uh, on a Pi and power the screen for only six watts. I think it's amazing. Okay, so thanks very much to Raspberry Pi for sending me this to test. I'm super impressed. I'll definitely be doing a load more 
on the Pi 500. Uh, I'm really impressed with that. I haven't put it back together again yet because I've got a few more ideas that I want to try. But uh, yeah, hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.